It's time to go on our very first camping trip in the brand new teardrop that we may or may not have just finished the final touches on yesterday. Over the last five months, we've been building this teardrop camper from scratch and it has been so fun seeing the progression from a stack of plywood to a shell to the waterproofing and finishing to the wiring and to see it on the road for the first time. We'd never thought we'd see this day. We will be sharing all the financials and cost of this build later, but right now, I gotta get packing. If you remember, we did build this for some friends of ours, so we are actually getting the honors to take it on its first camping trip and see if everything works and crossing my fingers that it does because, you know, that would just be a big old downer. You know what else is a downer? Is it supposed to rain from like 12 o'clock and all day today? Which is great because we're going to the beach and it sucks when it rains at the beach. Today is also Dylan's birthday, so we're gonna go try and play some golf before the rain comes. There is blue skies right now. How can it rain? Happy birthday, Dylan. Can't forget a camp chair. as it gets for old Dylan here. Par four, we're this close to the flag on uh, on the drive. It's like a, it's probably like close to a 260 drive or something. <laughs> now I'm gonna go triple bogey this. Get up. Oh, 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 oh. oh. No way! God, screwed. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Focus on the park. No! <laughs> Back holes. Molly has a par attempt. Come on. <laughs> Walk up on the floor. Walk up again. <laughs> and it's in the range ball. Walk up. Oh, cool. Let's get it over there without flag. Get lined up. And then just a simple little in the water. If you get it on the green first try, I'm gonna be so bad. Oh my gosh, you've got to be kidding me. You have got to be kidding me. Well guys, it is officially our first camping trip. It's a very quick outing, but we brought this camper down to the Gulf State Park in beautiful Gulf Shores, Alabama, which is pretty much right around the corner from where we live, so not too far away. We wanted to get this thing out on the road in a campground just to run, th run it through its paces a few times. Nothing crazy, just wanted to see how this thing performed. And so yeah, we got our spot all set up here. One of the awesome things about having a teardrop camper is how light it is that we're able to just take it off by hand, move it back to a more convenient spot in the campsite so that we have more privacy and actually better wind flow through the camper. The wind's blowing this way, so we're gonna get better ventilation this way. And yeah, it just gives you a lot more, lot more options. So I'll give you a quick tour of our campsite.
I guess we'll start up here in the front of the camper. I actually have the tongue locked. A lot of people commented, commented stuff about security. Right now we're just using a padlock to lock it for this one trip. But if you have any suggestions for padlocks, I'd be, or tongue locks and things like that, I would be all ears because I don't really think it makes it that much secure, more secure, but hey, what the heck. So we move back here. Obviously you guys haven't really gotten the full tour of the camper, so I'm gonna give you one. These doors turned out absolutely incredible. We handmade these doors and bought the windows and I actually installed this recently, which is an inset uh, plate here, strike plate, as well as one on the inside. Goodness, people. As well as one here on the inside of the door. I made these out of aluminum, just tidied everything up, as well as we'll make that last a whole lot longer. And now you can easily sort of shut and slam these doors without having to worry about hitting this on this wood. Much better, much better experience. We have the uh, fan going at full tilt right now to try to cool this thing off because it's set in a hot parking lot for quite a long time and got pretty hot inside. But Molly added in this nice bedding, added our pillows in. We actually have, well, one of the lights on here. We have two bedside lamps here on this side and they also have a USB charger in them and they're dimmable as well. So they're really useful uh, and pretty much the majority of the light comes from those in the camper. However, we do have one big overhead light up here. And that's really useful where, for when you're actually loading this thing up and you need a lot of extra light. But other than that, the inside's pretty simple. We have just a very basic, what I call the bunk in here, which is strong enough for even me to get up there. It's very, very strong. But the idea behind it is, is that who this camper is going to, their, their kids, dogs, anything like that, gear, all that stuff can go up there out of the way, as well as it's a really good place to put your laptop if you wanna watch a movie. We have this Max Air fan. Like I said, it's going wide open right now to, ha to try to get a lot of the hot air out of the camper. And uh, as far as ventilation goes, we have the windows here, but we also have these big vents down here, which the idea and hope behind those is that it will pull cold air from underneath the camper up in across your feet and then up across your body as it hits this bunk. That's sort of the hope and idea, we'll see. It is extremely hot today, so this is also sort of a test to see whether or not this camper is even doable in like 90 plus degree, 100% humidity without an AC. It's really, we don't know. This could be a very miserable night. We, You'll find out. Yeah, we'll find out very soon. It's also very stormy, so there's a high chance that we're gonna get uh, severe weather on the camper tonight. And uh, so that'll be interesting. Hopefully it's waterproof. But we also made these windows ourselves here out of acrylic, cut them on a laser. And then this trailer that this camper sits on is a Harbor Freight trailer that's been upgraded with 3,500 pound axles, as well as bigger leaf springs and uh, a lot of welding and stiffening to make it significantly more beefy. And then the wheels have been upgraded as well. Moving back here, we have a power outlet so that you can plug in anything on the outside of the camper. This outlet is uh, powered by our power supply back here in the back of the camper. So this, this camper, you know, does have its own battery bank. And yeah, coming back around to the back, we have this awesome, I'll go ahead and shut it, gigantic hatch here. I designed this to be a lot different than the majority of other hatches I've seen out there. This thing, it's huge, it weighs a lot, it has big gas struts on it, but the whole purpose behind it is to get it really far out over the cook area. A lot of teardrops have hatches that only stick about this far out over your cooktop. So if it's raining outside, you really can't get under them and you don't get much shade. So this comes a good almost 30 inches past the cook area. So you have plenty of room to stand under here. It's also enough room to get a, a canopy tent over it, right? So like you can make a bigger outdoor area back here. That was sort of the idea behind it. We also have this very basic shelf up here. You'll notice this camper is super, super basic. And we have just literally a countertop and open area. Again, the idea behind this was it's the first one we've made. We're not really sure how it's going to be used and it's real easy to add stuff later as you figure out exactly the way you want it to be instead of going ahead and building in something that we think 
we may use. Or in this instance, one of our really good friends will use. But yeah, it's really sort of an experiment. Right now we have obviously a cooler here, but this is sized big enough to have a 12 volt refrigerator. And then over here we have all of our power systems and everything. And today we're actually running the Blue Yeti AC180, which is a brand new uh, power station for us. So we'll be testing that out a little bit later in the video. But this camper has a super basic wiring setup to where basically you can plug in any power station of your choosing and it's going to power all of the AC as well as DC stuff in the camper. You don't have a fancy battery setup, which means that literally this simple, I can turn this battery off, unplug that, and I can take it with me. It's that simple. A lot of times with teardrop campers, they have integrated batteries and they're basically useless if you're not camping or you want to just take it over to a different part of the campsite whatever it may be it's super simple everything plugs in it's only one plug for the dc and one plug for the ac super simple sorry guys for barging in on the tour but blue eddie actually sponsored this week's video and so i want to go over a handful of things with you about this battery and i promise it won't take too long now blue eddie kept emphasizing to us that this thing has a crazy power output now standard it has 1800 watts in their default mode but you can actually turn it onto power lifting mode and get up to 2700 watts out of this thing, which is absolutely absurd. We're gonna try that out today. We're gonna try a microwave. Don't know how much that's gonna put out. And we're gonna try a heat gun. It's probably like two of the highest output items that I think anyone would normally use. So let's try them out. First up, let's, uh, let's try out the microwave. Simply plug it into the AC outlet, turn on the AC inverter. And this is just in standard mode. So we'll see how much wattage this actually uses and if we even need to go into the power lifting mode. Just going to uh, do a 30 second timer, let's go. Wow, it's, it's surprising, it's only about 1400 watts. It actually draws less power than our espresso machine, which I would have never thought. Let's keep going. Now with the exception of a welder, I don't know that we have any tools that get anywhere near this wattage, so I hope this does something. <laughs> okay, we're already at 1300. Let's see if we can get it higher. Just out of curiosity, let's see what a grinder does. All right. Surprisingly little. I guess there's only one thing left to do. Let's see if, you know, you're using your grinder while microwaving. Let's find out what happens. So I'm pretty sure that's gonna cover basically all of our power wattage needs for anything that we would ever use this battery for. So let's go over a couple of the other things. First of all, let's go over what you actually get as far as charging goes. You have a 15 watt wireless charger here on the top. You have a DC output in the form of like a cigarette lighter type. This is a 10 amp and that's what we actually use for all the DC on this camper. You then have a 100 watt USB-C as well as some three amp uh, USB type A's down here across the bottom. And then finally four AC outlets that are all capable of that 1800 wattage. And my favorite thing is the form factor. This is a 11, let's see, 1152 watt hour battery and it's very small and very lightweight. This isn't overwhelmingly heavy, you know, so I really like that about it. It's got a lot of power and punch for such a small form factor. Now, if you're a tech savvy person that likes apps with everything, this battery also comes with an app, which I do see some uses for in the camper, being is that this is down here in the back. We would actually be able to monitor power usage and how much we have left while being in the cabin. So I do see that being quite useful in certain situations, as well as this has eco mode, so you can actually control how much you're outputting and control how long, more or less, your output is going to last. Lastly, the thing that I think is the most impressive is that it can handle up to 1440 watts of input from any combination of solar panels, car charging, wall, whatever it may be, which can give you a very impressive recharge time from 0% to 80% in just 45 minutes, which is really wild. Now, if you're just plugging into the standard wall, which shocker, there is no power brick here. All you have to do is just plug it in with a standard power cord, which is really nice. You're still gonna be able to recharge this battery in under two hours, 
which is really awesome. Now Blue Eddie's got a sale going on from now until July 20th where you can get the AC 180 for $300 off. It retails at just about $800 and there'll be links in the description below if you're interested, but they have so much stuff on sale. So if you're looking for a combination of expansion batteries or anything bigger or anything else that they offer, they have a really large sale going on right now. So if you're interested, check the links in the description below. And thanks guys for uh, sponsoring this week's video. It helps out a lot. And yeah, let's get back into the tour. We also have two big overhead lights here, plenty of light can be added here obviously and we also have i didn't show this on the inside but you can see it down here we have two ac outlets as well as more usbs that protrude through the wall and are underneath that bunk bed so that you have ac power on the inside if you want to charge like your laptop or something like that this is all brand new obviously it's a sort of a, a prototype if you will it's an experiment to try out a lot of different things and tonight we're gonna we're gonna see if see if it works i don't know we have an entire build series if you're brand new to the channel it's the first video maybe you've seen we have like 19 videos before this one that you can check out to see exactly how we built everything and uh yeah I'll show you uh, with this closed up the way we keep it closed is by using a very simple compression latch nothing fancy like that's literally it throw a padlock on there and you've locked your hatch again just super simple wanted to keep keep the dollars low and we're going to have a video coming out and probably one of the next videos coming out will be how much we actually ended up spending building this as well as the final weight because spoiler we found out the weight and uh yeah you'll have to wait you have to wait you have to wait to find out what the, what the actual final weight of this thing is looks like there's a, a storm brewing so uh what you want to do molly oh yeah i forgot about that i got too busy showing off showing off my camper one of the things that Molly and I wanted to try out <clears throat> with this power station in general was the ability to run like bigger appliances. In our last video, we used our espresso machine, which we brought as well. But this is a kettle water boiler, which if, uh, if you've ever done much camping, you boil a lot of water for a lot of things. And this does it really fast and really clean and simple. And there's no dishes. And like, if this works... <laughs> It'll be a game changer. So we're just going to make some simple ramen noodles. We're not going crazy with, with cooking on this trip because we're real close to home. We're just simply taking it out. Test drive. It's a test drive. That's all it is. We're not going, we're not going nuts on this trip. Well, I guess let's, let's just see if it'll boil some water. Well, we try. <laughs> we try. We try, Molly. We try. One thing someone suggested in the last video was that we need to have AC outlets up here, like a pass through, because this is pretty annoying. And I 100% agree, but we're not really sure exactly where that hole needs to be yet or how we're going to do that. So for now, I know this is cringy and hard to look at, but it's going to go around the countertop. So it's really the first time I've used this Blue Yeti AC 180, but based on my research online, this is like cream of the crop of these power stations. So it's pretty exciting to have one of these to be able to test out. And uh, yeah. Let's, let's see what it can do. Quick little stats, it's got 1152 watt hours, which is pretty great for its form factor. It's very lightweight and it's capable of 1800 watts, which I think we're about to put that to the test because I'm feeling this thing's gonna draw quite a lot of power. So let's plug it in, flip the AC inverter on, see what happens. <laughs> I will be blown away if it can do, oh yeah, see. 1500, 1500 plus watts right now. Well, we're down to 86% on the battery. So it chewed through some of that battery. I think that chewed through about, what, 10%? That much? Yeah, it was like 96% yeah. when we started. So if you're gonna do that, just know that it's gonna chew through some battery. I mean, it's 1500 watts for like several minutes at a time. So that's kind of a lot. Like to give you a comparison, everything else on in the camper is 74 watts at once. <laughs> it's 1500. It uses a lot of power, but for the way that Molly and, I, Molly and I like to camp, where we're only gone for like a weekend at a time and something like this, it's really perfect for us because if we just wanna like, hop out for the weekend and do something quickly and we don't want to like have to prepare a whole thing with a meal and stuff 
like there's so many meals like one of the one of the, my favorites is uh mashed potatoes like the instant mashed potatoes um any of the uh, macaronis those types of things all of those like super easy meals cheap inexpensive meals to do when you're camping kettle kettle, kettle all the way i will i will take 10 percent of my battery it existed before me no didn't if i'm being honest i think that this ramen thing in the kettle just sort of embodies the teardrop lifestyle you know it's just simple home sweet home a little sticky real real hot let's get this sucker cranking it'll make it it's pretty warm <laughs> it is like probably 90 something degrees outside with 100 percent humidity so if we survive tonight, then this thing will no, be good anywhere. If Dylan doesn't baby out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm getting up here on the bunk. Are you kidding me? Oh, oh gosh. This is going to be better sleeping up here. It's going to be a lot colder. Uh oh. Uh oh. We'll probably just put a footprint on the window. Probably. Uh oh. Uh oh. Oh, yeah brings it right across. This fan just needs time to get all this hot air out of here. How you doing? Um, <laughs> sticky. Sweaty. Look at your face. Am I burnt? I'm pretty sure. Look at our rabbit friend. Just been chilling over there the whole time we've been here. Bo Molly, what are your thoughts on the camper? I'm so cozy. I wish I could open the doors, but Dylan's too afraid of the bugs. I'm not afraid of the bugs. The bugs are annoying. Well, I just wish there wasn't any bugs so I could have the doors open because it is super nice outside now. Well, we've done all the, the washing up, cleaning up, dinner stuff, and now we're just chilling and relaxing. Molly's editing some of the photos from today. And, uh, yeah. I'm actually under the covers. Wow. It is really quite nice in here now that the sun is not down but it started to go down it actually rained super hard i'm still getting used to this vlog thing i just realized i'm looking at myself it actually rained super hard earlier and no rain got into the camper but we were away from the camper when it rained so i didn't get to film any of it but if it rains again tonight hopefully we'll be able to show you some of the rain because uh so far so good it rained really hard and no rain appears to have gotten in thank goodness yeah that would have been miserable. This is so, like, these have these little nice little lights right here. Oh, 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 they change colors. And they dim. But it, it has such a cozy vibe with these lights. They're like just the right amount of, just the right amount of light. Also, benefit, Molly, of, mm -hmm. uh, we're both Don't doing Don't show it. my toes. <laughs> can't give those away for free. No. The nice part about the bunk bed is it gives you a nice foot rest. I mean, I don't really know why I'm doing it, but it's comfortable. I'm really just waving this thing around. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> this is why I'm the filmer, guys. Yeah. Oh. Oh, that's a nice shot right there. <laughs> what world? Look at the Look at the contrast. My pasty white face <laughs> and your lobster face. The golf will get you. Golf will get you. It's, uh, it's time for bed. Good night. Okay. Okay, good night. pretty good it was like your hair i don't know extremely hot extremely humid night last night and it was bearable with the fan on it wasn't like Comfy. super comfort but like i would put it in the category of like maybe like high 70s in there something like that yeah whereas molly and i usually sleep 
with it like close to 70 degrees in our house so it wasn't a worse our worst night camping oh not even close well, I'm just five thousand times the better van. than that oh yeah the van was pretty warm though if it wasn't for the humidity it actually would have been really really yeah. nice like i feel like if you're in a dry climate you could sleep in this in 90 degree like daytime weather um i think it i think the the lowest t outside temperature last night it got was like 85. well guys a little bittersweet but our first night camping is over with packing everything up and getting ready to head back to the shop Well guys, we made it back home and the camper is safe and sound back in her spot, taking up the majority of our workshop, but I would call that a very successful first trip. That was so fun. I cannot wait to do that when it's cooler outside and we can actually hang out outside with some friends. Well, the people that are actually taking this. So that's gonna be super exciting to look forward to. And I'm excited to build one of these for ourselves. Because oh now I have the bug. Oh and boy. I really, really wanna build another one. Now guys, like we mentioned before in this video, we have more videos coming out about this camper, including a video that's gonna be about how much we spent, how much the final weight is, and all of that sorts of details and stuff. So all that's coming, so subscribe if you haven't already. And thank you guys so much for all the love and support on this series. But also, if you want to get the SketchUp file for this, oh, yeah. that is now available on the website, which will be linked down below, too. Yep. All right, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.